This episode is Misadventures in Babysitting. So if you're watching on Disney Plus, uh, that is season one, episode eight. Yo, what's up? Welcome to Living Lizzie, a very Maguire podcast. My name is Jake Thomas. I'm uh, also known as Matt Maguire. And I'm Davida Williams, also known as Claire Miller. This episode, we are doing Misadventures in Babysitting. This is a funny episode. It's a great episode. Yeah, it's, it's a really a, it's good It's a one. condensed, <clears throat> like, one location kind of episode. I love it. They have a lot of fun little hijinks. Oh, yeah. We're, you're never really at... No one's at school. No one's at school. No one's at school. Oh, yeah. No one. I think the two locations are the, the um, restaurant, the restaurant, and the house. And the house. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. How close was this restaurant to this house? Because for the dad to be like, "Be right back." Yeah, <laughs> that was my one thing. I mean, it, it had to have been like right down the street. Just like. How I live in Highland Park, just yeah. somewhere I can just, walk. Just walk over there. Yeah. I'll be right back, kind of thing. Which also begs the question: Why are they so worried about if they're a block away? If they're a block away, <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah. it's not a big deal. I was thinking, though, what is Lizzie in seventh grade? This um, episode? yeah, probably like they, seventh or eighth. They grade. They mentioned that she's thirteen. Thirteen. So that's probably so eighth I, grade. I, I guess that's. When you start babysitting, yeah, yeah, it's and not were, that bad. I were was they thinking they paying looked, her. I don't because Gordo said he's there for the green. Yeah, maybe the maybe the the weed. The, the, I'm, the, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They. I feel like they didn't mention paying her, but she. I guess she had to be getting paid because why would she want to do it so bad? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Has to be. Uh, but also it's a responsibility thing. She wants the responsibility. Right. She wants to be, but also I guess at the end of the episode, they give her the responsibility and she's like, wait, I didn't want I didn't, this yeah. responsibility. It's that not, is what being an adult is. Yeah. It's like realizing like, ooh, I didn't Because when you're a kid, you're like, oh man, I want to be an adult. <laughs> I want the when, freedom. <laughs> when you're, you're an adult, you're like, I want to just take a nap. <laughs> yeah. 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 I li- I have the, all I wanted was my independence when I was little and now I like check the mail and I'm like, yeah, can My someone car else registration do this for me, yes, please? I, do. I don't want to deal yeah. with this. Uh, <laughs> man. Anyway, back to the episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this episode was directed by uh, Mark Rossman. Okay. Who um, we we actually it seems like we had a, a couple nicknames for our directors on set. So uh, you know we had Savage Steve Holland, although his name already. He already had that nickname when he came to us. We had um, Civilized Steve, which civilized Steve. it was just another Steve, but because we had Savage Steve, oh, we also had to do Civilized funny. Steve. Um, and then we had Mark, who was, uh, we, we, he was, he had the nickname Midnight Mark. And the reason was he would get a lot of coverage and and if you don't know coverage it's a it's a you know a a movie industry term which is like you get an establishing wide shot and then you get coverage where you're getting close ups of everybody in the scene he got a lot of coverage so his episodes looked great there was a lot of coverage but with that also comes the name Midnight Mark because everyone's like, oh, he, he's going to keep us here to midnight because yeah. he gets so much coverage. We can't go home early. That's so funny. I yeah. didn't know that. Who gave him that? I have no it idea. It just started floating it just, around. I think and... it, just, it just somebody on set just like gave him the nickname. He also directed Cinderella Story and then um, He's the Man or something. What is it? The Perfect Man. Oh, okay. The Perfect Man, which is two, that's two movies that Hillary did that that he was the director on. That's crazy. I, I also did a movie with Hillary that another Lizzie directed. Oh, Stan Winston. <laughs> oh, no, not Stan Winston. Rogal. Stan Rogow. Stan <laughs> I Rogow. I can't believe I just forgot his name. Stan Rogow. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty important man. Yes. Um, but he directed a movie that I did with Hillary. Uh, New Line Cinema did. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, so that was another that's Lizzie cool. team of people. All right, that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess Hillary really liked uh, Mark. I mean, he was good, uh, and I kind of kept him around. So Midnight that's kinda, Mark. Midnight Mark. Midnight Mark. I I don't know what I want my nickname to be as a director. Mm. Uh, hopefully not Midnight. Yeah, Midnight something Jake. a little like one take Jake. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> one take. Which yeah. that was my nickname when I uh, on on Lizzie. That's what the crew called me was one take Jake because you I would knew just your lines. I always knew my lines and I just do it in one take. Wow! And then we were good. We could move on. I mean, so. working with young people too, you'd stand out because there's a lot of yeah. you know you're still getting. My, my dad was always so meticulous about making sure that I was absolutely memorized off book yeah. on everything. Not only did I know my lines, I knew everybody else's everybody lines. Everybody else's lines. Yeah. That you know who did that one time I worked with um Jenna Ortega when mm-hmm. she did a Disney show. Yeah. Uh, I forget what it was called, but I did a guest star and I messed up and she was like, "Oh, that's when you say." And she knew everybody's lines and yeah. never missed yeah. a line. She was yeah. so professional, so smart. Because if you know your lines, then you can focus on reacting because acting That's true. is reacting. That's true. <laughs> Come here, bud. Come on, Max. I know you want love. Come on. Um, so in this episode, yes, Lizzie is going to babysit Matt. Did you ever babysit? Yeah, a lot. Yeah? Not really for my sister. We always had someone at the house. I don't think okay. my mom trusts. But then other people trusted me with their kids. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Weird how that works. So, okay. So I did. But I was, I was responsible. I was a okay. good good babysitter what age did you start babysitting i would say like 19 okay that's 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 a that's far off from 13 yeah very that's why i was thinking i was like well they look so small to be in charge of someone's child because that's your prized possession yeah um so leaving them with a 13 year old I personally would be very scared what knowing about a group of 13 year olds. Never. <laughs> never. It's almost worse. It's cr- cr- yeah. that's cr- a crazy idea. Yes. And I mean, what ensued was exactly crazy. what would happen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, they, they do a lot of home alone style. I was just going to say you're and you're the Macaulay. I am. Yeah. I totally, I even do a, yeah. like <laughs> if you, if you look at one, one scene, I'm doing that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, if, if you were, okay, if you were babysitting and somebody, is trying to break in all right would you set up an elaborate train track that pulls back a can of paint no. to okay i would just go lock myself in a room with the kid and call the authorities you're hired <laughs> you're hired as the babysitter <laughs> yeah and then maybe their parents yeah, after that I, all the like uh, that's a lot yeah 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 it's yeah. brave is what it's it is very brave yeah. really dumb yeah, very dumb. brave, really dumb, <laughs> very dumb. And then yeah. putting her dad through all that. Too yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Was a- the, I think that the takeaway for dad on that one was just lawn gnomes are dangerous, dangerous, never a good idea, a horrible hobby. And trust your kids and trust your kids. Yeah. <laughs> And less gnomes. I have one of those gnomes. Do you really? Yeah, I mean, I have oh so many God. stuff. I think you told me that you had a gnome. Because yeah. the gnome was such a big part of the show. Yeah. The lawn gnome was a huge part of the yeah. show. Yeah. It, it's it's at my parents' house in the backyard. I think my dad, my dad has basically taken over the painting of the gnomes now. That's... from Because that's what, that's what uh, uh, the dad, that's yeah. what Sam's doing. Sam McGuire's doing the, this episode. He's painting the gnomes. My dad now paints that paints gnome. Paints the gnomes. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, it lives on. How old were you, though, when you were left alone at home? I would say like mid-high school. Mid-high school. Okay. My mom was around a lot. Okay, okay. Um, I'm trying to think. I, w- I would say like 15 Okay, 16. I'd probably say 15, yeah. maybe 13 even for me. I've, yeah, actually, yeah, I would say 13. Like my parents were, were okay with leaving me at home for a while. Yeah. Um, but I feel uh, like teen is okay. Yeah. But then I look at 13-year-olds and I'm like, whoa, they were so small. Yeah. 13 yeah. is little. Yeah. Crazy. And then in two years, they get in a car and get behind a wheel. Right. That's a little, I want to change all the laws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make it like... All. 35 yeah <laughs> then you can drive yeah <laughs> and then you can stop driving after 60 and then you can run yeah you, you should yeah. be able to run for president the same age that you can drive a car this is true i think yeah. it's, I, it's 35 yeah. it's 35 yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah there is a call out here where um you know lizzie uh talks about how miranda babysits her baby sister all the time did you know that she Miranda even had a sister. Had a I wrote sister. that down because I was like, wait a minute. I was thinking, do we meet her parents? Yes, we do. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I ever met her parents, but the sister, I was like, you have a baby sister? Baby sister. And I mean, diaper age sister. Right. And exactly. that was just, I just discovered that yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Um, the baby sister is literally never seen again. <laughs> never mentioned. Never mentioned again, but she has a name. What is it? Stevie. What? Her name is Stevie. That is so weird. She was never seen again in the original series, but she was seen in a spinoff. In the reboot? No. Oh. In a much earlier spinoff after the original show was done, they did a spinoff. Much like, you know, That's a Raven had Corey in the house kind of thing. They had a spinoff of Lizzie McGuire that was Miranda and her younger sister. And they filmed the pilot. Oh, my God. And it was called Stevie Sanchez. St- Wait, how are they Starring Selena Gomez. Okay, okay. Yeah. I knew, I was going to say, I knew, I've, I had heard of that. Yeah. That's crazy they didn't pick it up. But Disney does that where they'll um, put the same person in a couple different things and then figure out which. Because I, I remember I did a pilot with Zac Efron yeah. and it didn't get picked up. And then they put him in High School Musical, like, right after that. Yeah, so after that didn't get picked up, they, uh, they put her in Wizards of Waverly Place. What? But evidently, the pilot, from what I heard, was just, it was too dramatic. Oh, okay. It was just, it was kind of, like, sad. sad. Mm. Yeah. That wasn't that era. Would have been good, though. Would have been really interesting. Yeah, it would have. Yeah. Selena Gomez and Lil Wayne. So, but, but Selena Gomez was going to be in the reboot. And, um, no, I'm kidding. I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, that would have been interesting. Oh. There's a really weird um, uh, a piece of dialogue conversation there where they're talking about why is it that um, Kate gets to babysit and, uh, and Liz, you can't. Like, what's the deal? I was thinking that, too, actually. I think that was a really good point because I, of all the kids, would trust Kate the least with my children. Oh, 100%. The indoctrination, the yeah. crazy things she would say yeah. and the meanness. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree that Lizzie should have been able to if Kate was allowed to. But do you remember what the reason was that they were talking about? What was it? No, the reason was... Is because Gordo says that she has certain biological features that make her seem more adult Mat- and mature. And then Miranda says, we get it, Gordo. She's stacked. Oh, you know what's crazy? That flew over my head when I, because I heard her say she's stacked. And I thought it was the money she was holding. It wasn't I'm the money. So out of touch. That's weird. Yeah. She's stacked. Another one for the parents. Uh, but again, I mean, <laughs> yeah, what else like, were they referring to? But also, like, the parents shouldn't be imagining. Yeah, uh, a 13 year old being stacked. Stacked, yeah. I did appreciate, at least, that when they were referring to Kate, they never cut to a wide shot of right. Kate. They were only up here. <laughs> they would have gotten in trouble for that. Problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Gord- you know, so Miranda says, "Yeah, she's stacked." But then Gordo, it cuts back to him, and he's like looking at her, and he's like, "Yes, yes, she is." Oh my gosh, it's really <laughs> creepy. Oh my gosh. We've got another great callback reference. There's a anime Lizzie doing "I'm Queen of the World." Oh, uh, Titanic. Titanic. Yeah. yeah, and water splashes on her. How uh, many times have you seen that movie? The Titan- like yeah. Titanic? Oh, man. I feel like enough. Enough, yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when it came out, there was like this competition. Yeah. of Like, I've seen it in theaters seven times. Whoa. At least the girls were doing that yeah. from what yeah. I remember. So I, and I remember, I, I saw it twice in theaters maybe. And I, But then I've, I've seen it. I just remember one thing from being, I don't know, what, 12, 11? I guess 11. From that, seeing that movie, boob. Oh yeah, there was boob. <laughs> yeah. I re- I just remember, I went with a group of girls and I like they were all sobbing and crying yeah. and yeah. I I wasn't on the Leonardo DiCaprio train yet. Yeah. I didn't really know who he was. I was very young. Yeah, and so I just was like, why are they acting like yeah. this yeah, over yeah. a movie? Did you ever watch it on VHS? Probably. 
Do you remember that it came on two VHS? Yes. Because <laughs> yes. it's, it's so long. long. You had to like have one, and then it said like to continue watching. Go to go tape to two. Tape two. Yeah, because oh, it's boy. like a three-hour movie. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Good times. Yeah. Good times. Uh, there's also uh, a, a thing there where um, Matt says, "Oh yeah, I'm going to play Monopoly. I'm going to be the race car." Now, this doesn't mean anything to anybody else, but I, I say race car, race car, race car, race car. That line, anytime a race car or a fast car or anything like that is alluded to around my parents, especially my dad, he will, without fail, say, Aww. race car, race car. <laughs> And that has been my existence for the past 23 oh my years. Gosh. Was that written or did you just start doing it? It was written. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that was written. Jumping yeah, yeah. all over the furniture. Yep. Was that fun? Uh, I, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, when is it not fun <laughs> yeah, to jump yeah, on yeah. furniture? Yeah. Anytime that they were allowing me to do a like uh, speed ramp thing, they were going to speed up and post where I just run around. Like I would just be running constantly. And the, yeah, that would, I, I think I enjoyed that. It yeah, fun, it was fun. Yeah. So, of course, uh, you know, Matt pulls a whole power move on Lizzie on this because he's supposed to be the one that's being babysit and like, you know, Lizzie's in charge. But it, but he's like, no, you want you want mom and dad to think you're a good babysitter. So if you want them to think that, then I'm going to, you know, do whatever I want. And then I'll tell them that you did a good job. Otherwise I'm going to tell them you did awful. And then they'll never give you any responsibility again. <laughs> so you got to listen to me. Yeah. I'm in charge. And, uh, so they have that, that whole power struggle. And then Gordo is like, Hey, you want to just, let's just go like, just, just come on. Let's just, just follow me. And, uh, he's like, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But, but guys don't babysit. I feel like, I, I feel like guys would have been able to corral 10 year old boys better. Better. Yeah. yeah. Because, because like who wants to listen to like their older sister or like some girl or whatever, when they're 11 or 10, you it's, think like, it's like, like no, gross and you're weird. Gross. Yeah. You yeah. don't get me. Yeah. And little boys do that a lot too. I remember I was nannying for this one little boy yeah. and he went through this phase where he would tell me, like if I say, no, you can't eat that. You can't yeah. do that. He would say, then you're fired. Whoa. And he was like six. Wow. And I was like, and his mom said to me after she was like, I'm really sorry if he um, tried to fire you because he's been doing that a lot lately to people. <laughs> wow. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he was a very privileged Weird. child, but yeah, he would, um, he told me I was fired. And I was like, Jeez. Oh, you can't fire okay. me because you don't pay me. You so are. little girls are better <laughs> to, to babysit. They're much easier. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's interesting because I always, I don't know, people always say boys are easier, yeah, or, yeah. but it, it, girls know how to behave. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember babysitters. Um, I remember that I was awful to babysit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> boys are a lot of work. I, I remember actually doing a horrible thing. I was like six years old um and uh i had a babysitter that was the uh the teenage girl that was um that lived across the street and we had a pool in the backyard that was like heated and everything and uh, i was like hey come out here check out the pool and like i was like feel the pool it's really warm no no you gotta feel it it's really warm so she reaches down to feel the pool and i pushed her into the pool oh no <laughs> i was horrible was we horrible. um my sister and I did something really bad too. Yeah. We, while my mom was gone, we locked the nanny in the basement. Whoa. To the point, <laughs> she was like crying because oh. we just did, we let, we kept her in there a long time. Wow. Um, yeah, it was very bad. Did you not just not like her? We did like her. That was the, that's the thing. Looking back, I don't, I didn't really dislike anyone that yeah. ever babysat for me. They were all really kind women. Uh-huh. Um, Kids are just bad. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are just yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Matt does a lot of really weird and annoying things uh, after he's had a bunch of uh, sugary drinks. Yes. And uh, he's, he's energetic. One of them, I think, is just entertaining because uh, this is such a 
little boy thing to do. He's just seeing all the different things he can pick up with a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was really funny. And, and and then it and then obviously he picks up the uh the the, the briefcase and that's what overloads the circuit yeah. evidently to the whole house and then yeah. knocks out the power. Yeah, of course. Um, which leads to him doing some lines like, I see dead people. Which did uh, were kids seeing Sixth Sense? I don't think maybe, so. Maybe maybe probably I, not. I had seen it. But I also was allowed to see anything. My parents yeah. didn't care. Um, but a lot of kids weren't allowed to see those yeah, types of no. things. No. And then, and then when Sam calls, he's like, it's me. I, I know you're home or something like that. It's a scream reference. And then he's watching us. He knows we're here. And then they, they hang up. Yeah. That's it, a lot of adult references. There was a lot of adult references for horror movies. For horror movies. Also, when Miranda starts singing My Country Tis of Thee yeah. too, I was like, yeah. but it was also... It sounded like a different song, but yeah. the right word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was like, do kids know that? I guess they teach you the very patriotic songs when you're little. Sure, so maybe. maybe. But My Country Tis of... Not that one. It was Maybe it was the only one they could get without having to license maybe. it or something. <laughs> maybe. I was like, yeah. why did she just sing yeah. that? Yeah. But it's funny. That's how you scare off raccoons. Yeah. Yeah. They hate patriotic, <laughs> they hate, uh, patriotism. They hate raccoons that song. Raccoons are, are communists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like working with Miranda and Gordo and Hillary all at once? Because you're usually back uh, at home. Yeah. And they're at school. And now you guys were kind of all together. Oh, awful. <laughs> awful. I hate working with them. Oh, man. I was just like, get me back to my B story. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Where I'm the star. <laughs> um, no, I, I it was, it was fun. I mean, yeah, it was something that we didn't get to do a whole lot. Um, and I imagine it was probably, it, it was rare because it was also probably more difficult for production because you've got all of your eggs in one basket right. of like time frame. Like I only, we only have a set amount of hours to film with True. all of these kids. We can't trade yeah. off kids. Yeah. So, um, like yeah. A I, rush I, against the clock. Yeah. It's a, it's a major rush against the clock. So yeah, it was great. It was, it was very fun when, um, you know, we had the opportunities to do that, but, uh, yeah, it was very seldom that we got to. It's, it's weird looking back on stuff like that too. Cause it's like, I don't, I mean, I remember like yeah. doing the episode, but I don't, I don't remember like the in-between stuff. I don't so like weird. remember the specifics. It's so strange how those memories are kind of like, Oof. yeah. Every once in a while I think of one, but for the most part, I'm like, that was decades ago. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun to watch the episodes over and just kind of revisit it. Yeah, sometimes. it definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. So many things I forgot. I'm sure that everybody thought that I was annoying. Annoying. <laughs> Just because I, I was younger. Yeah. And and it's like, you know, when you're when you're like 13, 14, whatever, you don't want to hang out with a 10 or 11 year old kid. Like, cause that, that age gap doesn't seem like a lot at any other age, but at that it's age, huge. it was huge. It's huge. So yeah. yeah, I don't think, I don't think they wanted to hang out with me or anything. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the episode, um, uh, Miranda had called the cops. And uh, the, the cops show up and arrest Sam as he's, you know, trying to break into the whole place. But the Sam, when, um, when the cops bring Sam up to the door uh, and knock and uh, they're like, you know, this guy and he's like, yeah, it's my father. Uh, the, the two cops, the um, uh, one of them was our executive producer, Jill Denton. I had no idea. Yeah. Even watching it. I don't yeah. even think I put that connection together. Yep. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, did he act in other stuff or just she 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 oh she, she yeah uh she was yeah she was uh there was a male cop but i'm talking about another episode oh, okay yeah yeah our, our our like executive producers and our writers and stuff they would just sneak in to uh to be like little bit parts That's throughout a... the entire series which is hilarious i think um i think jill also was uh like a cinematographer on an episode when I did the um, uh, the commercial, the cardio punch commercial, oh, she was funny. like the camera operator. Um, and then our writers would always like, oh, oh so like you, you know the um, the the two best friend guys who are always playing softball that have the monkey. Yeah, yeah, those were our writers. That's so funny. Um, so yeah, I mean like they were always sneaking their way oh, in. They're always around. Yeah, yeah. I love when parents admit they're wrong. 
that never happens. It never happens. When it does, it's like, what? Yeah. Um, and so I like that in this episode where they could admit their fault and mm -hmm. stuff. I think I'm that way a little bit too. I mean, whenever I say like, I'm sorry, it's my mm -hmm. fault to my mm -hmm. boyfriend. He's always like, what did what? you say? <laughs> What was that? Can I, can I get this can in writing? You say that again. Yeah. So I, I liked that they could admit they yeah. were fault. Um, there's. I read an interesting article that was talking about so the, the um, fantastic movie uh, and Oscar winning movie, everything everywhere all at once. Yes. How um, this article was saying that it was basically um, the millennials' fantasy because it it was parents apologizing and that is yeah. <laughs> evidently <laughs> that's all they the want millennial that's all they want yeah is, is all they want yeah is their I parents think so. to apologize to them for all the trauma yes. and, yeah 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 so what is our takeaway of life lesson in this episode uh we did, did we say trust the parent trust or parent Trust your kids. Trust your kids. Or just be trusting, you know. Yeah. And if you're going to trust somebody, don't like trust go them and sneak around. Yeah. And like double check that they're okay. And it's okay to admit when you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'd say those are great lessons. Yeah. Yeah. This was a parents episode. Yeah. This was, this was an episode for the parents. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time for questions from the audience. You all commented, emailed, did all the things and sent us your questions. And now we're going to answer some. So we have one from my cat <laughs> feeder. Okay. We have a question from Samuel, uh, on Patreon who asks, uh, this question is for Davida. Oh, uh, what was it like getting to work with Hillary again and raise your voice? And how did you get cast? So that, um, was very fun. It was really exciting to do a movie like that. It was like one of my first studio films mm -hmm. and there was a premiere and mm -hmm. all of that. And um, I got to meet Tom Hanks because Whoa. his wife was in the movie. That's cool. Yeah. And so that was really, really cool. Um, and I just got, I got cast the normal way. I mm -hmm. went and auditioned and all of that. I, I think I auditioned for a couple roles. I would like to think that Hillary and her mom like put in a good word. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they did, mm -hmm. um, which was really sweet. But yeah, it was really, it was a great cast. Like Kat Dennings was in it. Oh, and wow. Jason Ritter. Okay. Um, who, yeah, everyone kind of grew up to be really famous and <laughs> successful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, it was really cool That's to do awesome. that. And I, I was actually Hillary's best friend. Friend and not her enemy this time. Which is time. weird. <laughs> yes. How did that how did that feel? That was nice. It was okay. cool because we had some like um in the film, I think it's Jason Ritter's character mm -hmm. that passes away, and that's mm -hmm. her brother. And so we have some heart to hearts and mm -hmm. things um at where I'm like helping her as opposed yeah. to <laughs> bullying her and you didn't and, you didn't feel like an urge to just revert you know, <laughs> back to Kaylee. ew yeah, not at all okay. so yeah we had a lot of fun on on that side it was fun that's cool yeah nice okay adrian from instagram asks which guest star on lizzie did you not realize was a big effing deal until you got older you go first okay i would probably say Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. True. <laughs> Steven Tyler yeah. was in an episode because like uh his kids like the show. His or kids like the yeah. show. And like that's a huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. That'd be so funny to tell your agents like, hey, can you get me on Lizzie McGuire? <laughs> <laughs> they're like what <laughs> what's, what's weird i also have like kind of a, a a similar story to that so a friend of mine um was i wonder if i should say the actual names on this i'll just i'll just make it vague okay. uh so a friend of mine that i worked with uh he was on a show uh, uh a little while back that was very popular and um uh taylor swift dm'd him and started like like talking with him and like trying to like you know uh, converse and be friends and everything and then she asked like hey can i come and visit the set sometime and then i think he straight up was like i mean like you you don't have to go through me <laughs> <laughs> to like get invited to the set yeah. you could just call up probably anybody Anyone and, just and say, they'll just let you on set yeah yeah 
Um, I just read. She, I just read this morning that um, she has the most number one singles in iTunes history, and it's like fifty four wow. number one singles. So yeah, she can. She could probably just call up any show. show up. She could probably show- just. Stroll up to the gate. Just stroll up, yeah, and be <laughs> like, like, "Hey, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Let me yeah. in." That's so that would funny. be really entertaining. Yeah, she should do that. Yeah, that is. It is funny that Steven yeah. Tyler would be like, "Hey, yeah, I just got off my world tour. <laughs> can, can I? I? Can I be on the show?" <laughs> I, Taylor Swift. I really didn't want to be in the show. She just wanted, she just wanted to, to see. It. She just wanted to go wow. on set and just be there. Wow. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> do you have anyone that you can think of? Um, we did have a lot of guest stars throughout the show. Um, we had a lot. I mean, Aaron Carter, yeah. Kyla Pratt was big. Yeah. She's always been big since we were little. And I think since I was always around her kind of peripherally through mm-hmm. friends and auditions and things, I didn't realize how successful she was. She's very yeah. successful in her own right. David Carradine's brother. D- David Carradine. Uh, so Bobby Carradine's brother, I David mean, Carradine. Uh, yeah. God. Today is not my day for That's names. Right. Yeah, yeah. David Carradine, who... Yes. Uh, came on to do the Kung Fu yes. episode. Huge star. Huge star. Kill Bill. If you ever saw any yes. of that, he was Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was one too. I was like, yeah. oh, his, his brother's doing an episode? Oh, his yeah. brother. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That is going to do it for this episode of Living Lizzie. Thank you all so much for watching, listening, all that stuff, experiencing things, being here in 3D <laughs> uh, VR. Uh, I don't think we have that feature yet. We're working, yeah. working on that. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the, the Jake Thomas and Davida Williams experience where oh you can just God. be in our point of view right here. That would be I don't think anyone needs that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe not. Um, be sure to uh, subscribe, comment. If you want your questions to be read and answered on uh, on air, then, uh, then send them in. Yeah. Comment. Ask them. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.